Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Owl YouTube channel and it is Saturday which means it is time for another Inspired Saturdays collaboration here on my YouTube channel. I hope you'll stick around, see who I'm going to be inspired by this week and find out how you can go to their channel and find out how I inspired them. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and maybe even tap on that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. I'm so excited to be back with another Inspired Saturdays collaboration video. This week, I am teaming up with Olivia of ORM Crafty Designs if you're new to Inspired Saturdays, let me tell you just a little bit about it before I get started. This is a collaboration that I host, and I team up with another crafty YouTuber, usually just about every Saturday, and I create a project that was inspired by something that they have made, and then they do the same thing on their channel, but they create a project that was based upon something that I created. Now, one of the very fun things about this is that neither of us know what inspired the other until the video goes live. So I always love seeing how I inspired others. Make sure that when you're done watching my video today that you check out Olivia's video. It will be linked at the top of the description box below. For my inspiration piece today, I took the project that you see on screen now. This is actually a screenshot from a card on Instagram. Now I couldn't find a specific video where she created this card here on YouTube, but I did find another one where she created that gorgeous floral pattern paper piece. So I will link the original Instagram post that I'm being inspired by below, as well as her video where she showed you how she created that piece. What inspired me about her piece was not only that gorgeous floral paper, but I love that wave on the right side. I knew that I had the perfect tool to recreate that. You'll notice here that I have out my Creative Memories Wavy Cutter, I believe it's called. I have had this thing for probably 15 years. If I ever run out of blades, I am in trouble. It puts a beautiful wave cut, two different waves, a shorter one and a longer one. And it's just an easy way to put that wave cut into something. So I will be using this today, along with some goodies that a subscriber recently sent me. Pam P. of Oregon, if you watch my recent Happy Mail or Viewer Card video, you might have already seen this. But she gifted me with this Wrapped in Christmas Stampin' Up! set and some 6x12 Christmas papers. So I know it's a little bit early, but I wanted to get this out and use it. So I will be making a Christmas card, or maybe even cards today. I might make a couple since I have the paper out with these goodies. Now if I add any more products as I create my card, I will make sure to let you know in the voiceover. If I do leave you with any questions, make sure to leave those in the comment section below, and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! To get started, I chose four pattern papers from the collection. I chose two sets of two that I wanted to go together. Once I had those selected, I cut each piece into two pieces that were four and a quarter inches wide by five and a half inches tall. Depending upon the orientation of the pattern did affect how I cut the piece down. Now I realize later I cut one of these pieces a little too small, so I don't end up getting as many cards as I wanted to, but I still get a good amount. You'll have to wait till the end to see how many I get though. Once I had those pattern papers cut, I brought in a piece of 17 pound vellum and I cut it into eight pieces that were two inches wide by five and a half inches tall. And now it's time to bring in the wavy trimmer. I wasn't sure yet which wave I wanted to use, so at first I did try one on each of the waves and I tried some different depths or different measurements of where I cut it. I thought the first one looked a little too skinny, that strip on the right, so I did one a little wider, and then the next one I used the small wave to do the cutting. Unfortunately, I forgot to cut a second one to go with this, 
but I really did prefer the larger wave on this card anyway. So I just continue to cut those until I have put the wave in each one of those pieces. After I got the wave in all of the pattern paper pieces, I then brought in those vellum strips. And this one I really didn't measure. I just stacked two of the pieces of vellum on top of each other just to make cutting easier. And then I just put them down on that left wave and cut them. I really just need a little bit that's going to hang off the back edge, which you'll see how I'm gonna do that here in just a minute. I should have probably said just a second because this is when I started putting the vellum on the back. You'll notice here that I want it to just come out just a little bit and that is going to cover up the gap between the two pattern papers on the card front. I put a little adhesive on the back of the pattern paper piece and then laid that down onto the vellum. When I go to put the cards together, I will end up using two different pattern papers on the front, kind of like what you see here. The neat thing is you can still see that striped paper through the vellum just a little bit. I continued with the vellum paper pieces until each of the larger waves had a piece of vellum behind it. While I work on that, I did want to let you know that if you are a crafty YouTuber and you would like to be considered for an Inspired Saturdays collaboration, I will have the video linked below which tells you all about it and how to fill out the application. Off camera, I pulled out six of my pre-made top fold card bases and then I started adhering these together. I start by placing adhesive on the back of the smaller wavy piece because that does need to lay under the piece with the vellum. That is the piece that goes on next and I just align each of those so they fill the card completely. I do this same thing until I have most of my card bases filled. I did end up getting six cards out of this, but you'll see later one of them has some extra white border on the left and right, which originally I was just gonna get rid of it, but you know what? I decided to make it work because nobody is gonna get more than one of these cards at a time, and hey, they won't even know that it wasn't supposed to look like that. Now let's get some sentiment stamped. Off camera, I cut some scraps of white cardstock to one inch tall by four inches wide. I got out two Gina K Designs ink cubes. The first one is jelly bean green and the red one is red velvet. Now because the rubber stamps do have the foam on the back, I did take the mouse pad out of my Misty. Now I'm using the Misty not only because I need to stamp the same thing six times, but I do want to make sure that that is nice and straight. Now I will be punching off the right side of this piece of cardstock, so I do align that a little bit more to the left. Once I have that in place, I pick it up with the door of my Misty and I ink it up with my red velvet and you'll see that stamped super nicely right off the bat. I stamp one more in the red, and then once I have that done, I clean off my stamp, and I stamp the remaining four with the green ink. Now, originally I meant to put the two red on two specific cards, but again, kind of mix those up, but you know what, we're working with it. To get the fishtail in the ends of my sentiments, I will be using the new punch from Stampin' Up, and I believe it is called Banner's Pick-A-Punch. It puts a fishtail and a reverse fishtail in the ends of smaller, like, sentiment strips of cardstock. I did use this on the most recent sheet load of cards, and this is probably going to end up being one of my favorite punches. All of the pieces are ready, so now it's time to bring in my big blue roll of foam tape. This width, the three quarters inch wide, is newer for me. You know if you've been here long that I love the quarter inch wide blue tape to use on shaker cards. Well, I saw that Amazon carried the wider width and I just had to give it a try. 
I know that the roll seems kind of pricey, but if you look at the length you get, I think it's a lot cheaper than other things out there. So I use that on the back of each of the sentiment strips and place those on the bottom left of the card fronts. Normally, this is when you would hear me say, no card is finished without a little sparkle or bling, but once I saw the cards finished, I decided that I was gonna go ahead and leave them as is. I think these are just a nice, clean, and simple set. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I made this quick and easy, clean and simple set of Christmas cards. If you did, as always, I appreciate a thumbs up. Now don't forget to go check out Olivia's video. It is linked in the description box below. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.